Any questions? I said I wasn't going to ask that anymore, so y'all never have questions. No questions. What a mess. Anybody? Yes. Anybody have a life? Yes, ma'am. Well, I had a life because I got a chance to look at myself as you and your team were discussing this matter with the parents who went to jail or prison or whatever right. for their child. Um, oh, there were uh, parents convicted this week of uh, this son was accused of going into a high school and shooting it up. Also, shooting up some people, not all people. And they did. And the court decided to punish the parents for it. And so the parents were convicted 10 to 15 years in prison, according to the report. And we discussed that on the radio show if the parents should have gone to jail. For ignoring the signs. What? They went to jail for ignoring the signs there, Joel. Okay. And you say? I say <clears throat> that, you know, I had an opportunity to not take sides because I understood your perspective, Nick's, um, Hakes, everyone on that side of the argument. However, I thought uh, Joel made some very valid points. And... I understand what you're saying in terms of the parent shouldn't be responsible for the child. However, there's, there are extenuating circumstances to everything. And I understand what you mean when you say it's an attack on guns and all of that, but I think that, that what makes this uh, case a little bit different is are all the signs that this, this boy displayed. I mean, of course, I don't have all of the information in front of right. me, but not only did uh, where there are some very troubling signs, but they also bought, purchased the gun for this child. And it's not like he just, out of the blue, um, developed these mental issues. Those were, I'm sure that there, those were progressive, you know, issues that were present long before they bought him the gun, or I can't be sure, but I suspect. So I just... You know, my whole point in bringing that up is that it really gave me a chance to not take sides and to really look at the information on both sides. And that was um, interesting to me because I do have a tendency to take sides when it comes to, you know, political issues or issues where I feel like someone is being uh, an animal is harmed or a child is harmed, I'll immediately go to the side of the person who did the harming without, yeah. you know, all of the information being in front of me. So I just wanted to share that. And you thought that Joel made a valid point? Absolutely. What I don't the, understand why others, I don't understand why you made? all don't understand his point. What? I don't understand why you and your panel didn't understand what he was conveying. <laughs> <laughs> And what was the valid point Joel made? <laughs> I, because his point that he was making is that the parents, there was a note involved where blood is gushing out of someone's head or whatever it was. The teacher, you know, saw this. She reported it to the office. They recommended counseling. The parents denied the counseling. The child went to school the next day, killed all these people. And it's easy to say, well, you know, this is an attack on guns, you know, the parents shouldn't go to prison, but, you know, there are parents out there who expected to see their child that day. You know, it's out of order for a child to perish before the parent. So Not that's anymore. deep, and it's traumatizing. It's, it's normal now for the child to die before the parent. Well, I don't know the stats on that, but I know that um, a child of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you don't expect that child to perish before you do as a parent. And I believe that what Joel was, was wanting to communicate, and he, I thought he communicated in a, in, a, in a way that made sense, is that you know these parents have some culpability because they saw the signs. These signs were, were extreme. They weren't just... Um, you know, well, I, mean, I think parents, that maybe something could I mean, be a little bit off. I mean, parents look at their children and think, oh, I see a sign. Well, they should look at their children But how many the parents look at their children and say, these are reserved for people from Riverside? 
Arizona. We're not from Riverside. Arizona. <laughs> Where are you from? Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Yeah. Come on, Palm Springs. Come on, those are for you. Okay. <laughs> Put me on the hot seat. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Good. How many parents look at their children and say, oh, I see a sign? I'm sure that, well, they should. If Why? They don't, if they, Why should because parents look at their kids and see for a sign what? Because they're the parent and the whole ma but and the nobody whole nobody ever look at their children and say, let me look for a sign. Well, Jesse, you That's just really the experts saying that, but normal people don't look for signs. Stupid people say that. The experts, stupid. Not you. They say, they say you should look for a sign. How many parents walk around let me see a sign. Or, or buy their son a gun, and they say, oh, Lord. My well, parents bought me a gun. They didn't give it a second thought. Yeah, but you weren't displaying signs of being erratic and mentally disturbed. Yes, and I was. Thing, I was crazy as a doorknob. I, I, I doubt that you were drawing no, pictures I, no, of I was crazy. the blood gushing out of people's All heads. kids are crazy. Well, Jesse, Sorry, kids. let me just say this last thing. <laughs> Okay, in terms of walking around well, looking don't for Don't listen to the experts talking about the parish should be a sign. They are setting you up. Okay, let me just speak to that little and point And then the right fact there. they bought the boy a gun, they are not responsible for that. Yeah, um, nine times out of ten, they're not. It's normal to buy your son a gun at a certain age. Not when they're mentally disturbed. I don't but believe who, it is. How many parents know their kids? The parents are mentally disturbed. Everybody mentally disturbed. This boy was an extreme case. And another thing, <laughs> to leave a child at home at eight years old, you at really took me over the edge with that one. At eight years old? Yeah. I mean, seriously. That, I was talking to the radio. I was left home phone. at six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And they'd be gone to work. Ain't nobody around. I've never heard of that ever. Yeah. You too? Yeah, I'm growing up and leaving kids at home. That. You two know? See, all these experts making a fool out of you. They talk all this <laughs> crap. I was left at home at 6 o'clock. I mean, at 6 years old. I've 8 years heard. old. How many people were left And I'm like, Mom, outside. I don't have no... See, look. Normal people. <laughs> okay, well, I've never heard of that. You listen to the expert, they're confusing you. I... I Okay, well, they, and they don't know what they're talking about. We were always left at home. And I come home, Mama, what a food! I had a food looking at stove, looking at your food in that stove. Oh, okay. I have never heard of that. Yeah. I'm so serious. I'm I like, have not heard bizarre. of not leave them at home, <laughs> right? See, look how many people it's normal. That's abnormal. When you listen to the experts, I think my way was normal. What? I think my way is normal. I would what? not leave my child home at eight years old. Why not? I don't feel comfortable with that. That's You've not even a teenager. You've been listening to the experts. Well, well now okay. it's a little different because people come and rob you. And they'll steal your kids. <laughs> they'll steal your kids. Before, they didn't steal kids. They didn't want them. <laughs> so many people want to come in. Sean first. Right on. Uh, I still agree with that. I still believe that Joel made very valid points, and I don't understand why you all don't understand that. Oh, Lord. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay. What was the valid point? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Doug first. No, Sean's on away. Go ahead, Doug. When I was easily... Before 10, I think I was like eight, and I had a sister and a brother at home. I used to have to watch them because my parents would need to go somewhere or leave for a few hours. And yeah. we were just told that, as a matter of fact, I had to cook. Sometimes I had to cook for them, make lunch. Um, we were told that uh, if anybody knocks on that door, don't you dare answer it. Don't you dare tell anybody that we are out. We, we just learned, learned it that way. And they didn't even tell us that. <laughs> they just left us at home. And we didn't have 911 at that time. That, no, nine, we didn't even have phones. Right. Yes. You were listening to the expert. They're messing you up. But it doesn't mean that she... I know you were raised wrong. Every child on my Please, Mike. 
Well, everyone I know in my community, that would be, I've just never heard of that. What, anything could happen. You're not, your Stop brain isn't even around. developed. <laughs> Stop what? Stop monkeying around. <laughs> I, in the Midwest, and maybe that has something to do with it. You know, Midwesterners didn't do that. Oh, uh, he asked, where were you raised? You said the Midwest. Hold on a minute. Yeah. yeah. Midwestern, in the Midwest, we didn't do that. So okay. I'll just leave it at that. No wonder. Yeah. Were you raised in the Midwest, too? I mean, I've, I've never seen, I mean, maybe, see, well, to make the point is that there was a different time back then to where kids were raised differently. So maybe they were left alone. And the reason why you were given a gun is because you always speak about how you were raised a certain way with values. Your grandparents taught you the right thing. So of course- They didn't even raise us with values. Okay, but that's not what you've said multiple times on your show. Right, I made a but, mistake. <laughs> but that's why they were given they were a gun. They were raising us with them, but they didn't say they were. Right, but that's why you were able to have a gun because you had these certain values instilled no, in you. I was 15. Which still makes my point. Uh -uh. That's why you're they didn't say, a here, here, 15 year old boy, you a value, a person of value. They didn't say to that. Because I was knew, old enough to have a gun. Because they knew that you wouldn't do anything crazy with it. They you. didn't know for sure. Well, now you guys are just making stuff up. But also, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it also necessarily <laughs> doesn't mean that the person listening to the experts just because they have an opposing opinion. The, uh, anybody that listens to the experts is crazy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The experts are crazy. They're insane. I promise you, they're insane. They're weakening everybody. They're weakening their family. They're trying to tell you how to raise your kids. They don't even have kids. They had abortions. And they tell you what you... They have all kinds of people coming and taking your children away from you. Social workers are some of the worst people you ever want to meet. And you can't listen to the world. You can't listen to the government. You can't listen to the preachers. You can't listen to the doctors. The doctors don't even examine you anymore. They just give you pills. And then you can call up pharmacists. I'm running out of pills. Can I come up and get some more? Or then the pharmacy will tell you, your medication is running out. You better come. You never see the doctor in a whole year or two. They are weakened. You can't listen to the world. We've got to overcome the world. Yes. I mean, and I do. I agree with everything you're saying on that. I know that we're not supposed to. I know that we've been lied to from with everything within government, all of it. I totally agree with that 100 percent. But like Joelle was saying, pertaining to your childhood, first of all, you were raised with morals and values. And no, no your parents didn't say that. But I'm just saying, oh, Jesse, yeah. they didn't tell you that. But you knew that you knew that. And they knew and they knew that. So they, they knew that you would be responsible with the gun. They knew instinctively that you would no, be they responsible. Didn't. They weren't thinking that way at all. But if they didn't think that you would be responsible, they probably would not have given you that gun. And they didn't think either way. That just seems very strange that they would not have thought about that to give you a weapon that the could kill like, someone. The normal age for a boy to get a gun in those days was 15 years old, a hunt rifle. And so 15 came, and I got a gun, and I went right out and shot a squirrel in the tree. And Tony was with me, Who the dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, the last thing I want to say, okay, that's fine. because parents had control of their own children. Now the government has control, and the experts have control, and they don't know what they're talking about. They don't care about you anyway. They're weakening you. Yeah, but the thing about it, it, though, is that those were different times. The culture was different. But they just the parents the have the parents to control of their life. The time, the things they can still be the same. But when you turn your life over to these people, then it's still the same time. It's just crazy people telling adults what to do and what not to do. But you don't doubt, though, that those were different Women times. Women tell kid, mother, you need to feed your baby formula. Rather than in the good old days when a woman had a baby, she breastfed right away. They're making money. They're sending you to the store to buy milk rather than using the milk God gave you. 
So you're saying that it has those all the vitamin and everything already in it, and you don't have to worry about if they're gonna run out of milk. And now women don't even breastfeed. Who want to have a baby with a woman that won't breastfeed? The experts told them not to, and they all have a deal with the milk with the formula people. You, you don't realize how much you're losing control of your life listening to someone else. But okay, so but seriously, you're you're saying that there is no difference between parenting when you were growing up and parenting and the, what's shifted in this culture between then and now, and how that that would be impactful in terms of what we're seeing. There's been an increase in violence across the board, not only with children but adults, and it, it's a There's palpable a shift difference. shift because everybody turned their lives over to someone else. But I'm just saying the shift is still there and times were still different. When you were growing up, children were not going into schools killing people. Because the parents raised them. But what, but what, okay, but that still supports my statement that times were different back then, regardless of why they were still different. I know, different. but when will you stop listening to the experts? Well, I don't listen to, I agree with you, you on that You just listen to one you have to quote now. Well, yeah, because he did have a valid point, and there, there are extenuating, he's, he's had so several valid rocking. points, and there are extenuating circumstances to everything. There are extenuating circumstances. You've so, got to turn away from the world. But I agree with I'm saying I agree with you, Jesse, on what you're saying. I know right. that our, our gun rights and all of that are being, um, we, they, they want to take those They're rights away from us. They're controlling every aspect of life now. They tell you how to be a parent what to feed your children, what not to feed your children, where to go, when to go, what gym to go to, which gym not to go to, how to lose weight, how not to lose weight, how to do this. And everybody go, yeah, okay. Okay, so and you're these saying- these people are some of the evil people. Well, let me ask you this then. So at every instance now, from here on out, <clears throat> if there's a child whose parents go to jail for anything that they do, it's an automatic they want to take your gun rights away. There's not going to be, I thought you said we not only do they want to take your gun rights away, they want to take your freedom away from you. And they want to control you. So there's no extenuating circumstance no. to this? And I, well, I don't, know, I don't know what's going to happen down the road. I'm talking about right now and what it's building up to. They are taking your freedom away, not just guns. So You're what not going to be able to make any decisions about your children after a while. So what happened to not taking sides and waiting until you see all of the information in front? I'm you? not taking sides. Well, you took the I'll sides. I'm rejecting the... both. How are you not taking sides, though? Because you said I'm that telling you don't the agree parents the to parents... be parents to your own children, to be independent again, to think and do for yourself. Don't listen to these people. They're just using you for money. I'm trying to encourage people to stand on. On their own. Most people are afraid to stand on their own. It's hard to find a person that would stand on his or her own now. They're looking to some expert or somebody. Yeah, but you said that the parents what? shouldn't have gone to prison. <laughs> he said she's trying to stand on her own. But no, she's trying to stand with you. I'm not. I just happen to believe that he has valid points. But, do but we've you already. See, do you see that every right? Every freedom is being taken away from you? One hundred percent. I totally agree with all of that. So what all do you I'm think is going to happen now that they're, they're, they've got permission to lock up parents? So if a parent sees that a child that they are responsible for, because under the, under the laws of the land, until the child turns 18, the parent is responsible. If a child Well, there should be no 12, laws that tell the parents they are responsible. So if a child rams there are their natural car. natural laws that would guide parents. So if a, if a child ram, gets in a car, they're 10 years old, and they just run over five people, and kill all of them. The, no one, it's just... Oh. Put that child in prison. But that's not the law of the land. It, it should be. It used to be. But it isn't. If a, if a child, child got in a car, ran over somebody, that child need to go to prison. They won't run over anybody else. And then they need to work on the roads. Put a chain gang. I just, I, yeah, I think this is like something that I just don't... I'm sorry, but... I don't agree with, that you agree with her at all. Not at all. Right here. No, right here. Do I agree with what exactly before I say uh, yes I'll or no? See. <laughs> you said these are different times, right? Um, I, I do think that back when you was probably raised is 
as a whole different to now, but then how we're raising our younger two is not as of the world. So I, I see what Danielle is saying, and I also see what you're saying. So I kind of agree with aspects of both. But time is not changing. The people are changing. They're giving up their lives. Yeah, I, I do agree with that, yeah. The time is still the same. It's the people are changing. Yeah. Parents are giving up their lives to let somebody else tell them how to raise their children and what to do and not to do and when to do it and what. You yeah, don't realize the damage that that's causing. No, I totally agree with that. But I feel like if, if as, as parents, if you're not educating yourself in seeing that, that the people are changing or society is changing and you don't kind of stick to your guns that this is still how we're going to raise our children and it is going to be different than, you know, like how me and Anthony raised these, the younger two is, is very different to how a lot of what we see nowadays. And people are like, oh, you're too strict or you're too this or you're too that. But, it's but like, when they say they give them the finger. We do. And we say we oh, do what good. we want to do, yeah, for sure. But time is not changing. People are changing. Yeah, I can agree People with that. People are weaker today than ever, the men mm -hmm. and the women. Because they don't have control of their lives anymore. And that's what the problem is. And then you've also got all of the technology as well. That wasn't all around when you were That's another up. thing to control you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as the baby pop out of the womb, the mama give it a TV. Because <laughs> now the mama don't have to be responsible. But if the mother said no, the father said no, we don't want that. When this child grow of age, mm -hmm. let him buy his, or her buy his own phone. I ain't paying for no phone. But I, I do think, though, I can see what Danielle they is saying. They tell you, oh, you need to give the kids a phone so you can talk to them at school. By what? You go to school to learn your lesson, ABC. You don't need to be calling mommy all every hour. Yeah, but That's I another setup. They convince you that you need to give your kids a phone for school, and the parents say, okay. Yeah. But right? I do, yes, but I, do, I can see what, a little bit of what Danielle is saying, that... For example, like, let's just say this one. If I think she's, uh, I think I would be able to tell there was a little crazy, like, and I wouldn't be giving her a, a gun if I thought something was a little off. But then, for example, I don't know all the details surrounding that, that kid that did what he did, but the parents have got to be slightly off, right, for him to be off. Parents do not downhill? be looking at the, when a child is crazy, they're crazy, everybody just knows it's a crazy child. They're acting out doing, that's a crazy one. <laughs> but... <laughs> The parents and the kids are the same. They have the yeah, same. Sure. So whatever the parents are doing is the way the kids got to yeah, act. So they don't know that and they're so crazy. And so how is the parents going to know that the kids are crazy when they don't know that they're crazy? So then in the end of the day, then they're all responsible. Right. We don't need the government to do it, though. <laughs> He's doing this in front of the camera. We don't need the government. You need to be responsible for that, not the government. The government people don't have any sense. They are about self and no one else. They care two cents about you. Okay, so in that... It's about making money and getting power. They don't care about you. That makes sense. I agree with you, but... You, you got to see that real clear so you can stop doing what they tell you to do. So in that situation where the parents are a little off and the kid is now off, do you think that the parents should have not gone to... not got locked up? I don't know, because I, I don't know if the parents are off. I don't know what that means. Just because they said about the parent, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, true. It, it, that makes sense? Yeah. All right. The uh, young lady, did you want to say something about that? Uh, no, I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yes. I heard your discussion. What about what Sean said about how the parents should do time? Who said that? Sean. He mentioned. Where, where Sean I don't now? remember exactly. <laughs> He's locked up. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I don't remember exactly what he said, but instead of them getting locked up, that they should do some sort of service or time instead of... The, the government yeah. doesn't have any right to punish you about your children at all. Zero. If the kids get in trouble, the kids go to take the punishment, not the parent. Because the kids got to live with the kid as they grow up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I remember when we were growing up, my grandmother... And well, always, not always, but would tell us, you go out there, he said when we turn 15 and start going out, taking the girls and stuff. They're like, you go out there, you get in trouble, don't call me. I ain't answering no phone. I'm not coming to see you. 
I'm not putting money on the books or anything. And that kept me out of trouble. They didn't have to walk around and watch me and the government watch me. I was going to jail if I got in trouble. And then I was going to be working on the road, and my family member was going to be driving down the road, and they are going to see me working on the road, chain gang, and laughing and waving. <laughs> remember those chain gang people? You don't remember that? No. You don't remember that? No. When I become president, I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Did you ever work on the chain gang? Never did. Just did you ever see it when I'm driving down the road? Absolutely. I've seen it quite a those bit. Those were the good old days. And when those boys got out of jail, they didn't go back. They didn't like no, you know how they said they're in and out now? They didn't go back because they didn't want to fish the roads no, and not get paid. Jesse, I see both sides of the, I see what you're saying because the more control the government has, Next thing you know, it can be like a slippery slope to where it's they take control real of fast yeah, right now. everything. But I do see Joel's and Danielle's point a little bit. But in, in what way? Just um, the parents held accountable on some level, maybe something. But again, I, I'm kind of the boy. Fifteen? How old is the boy? Fifteen? The boy fifteen yeah, years old. I did it. I the did parents it. not going to follow him around as he was going on. No, absolutely not. And they're not going to look in the bedroom. Oh, let me look in the bedroom and see what they got. Yeah, I'm kind of, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of, I understand your point a little more. Like the government, again, you start with just locking parents up. Then what's the next move? It's going to be something else. It is. And then, yeah. Believe it. They, now that they already convinced you to let social workers come in and take your kids. If you spank them, they go to school, you, they're going to come and get you. You said yes to that. And now you're telling the government they can lock up your parents? See how one thing led to another one? Yeah, absolutely. I see it can be a slippery slope. It'll, it'll and just the people that are doing this are evil people. They're not like friendly, loving, God-fearing people. It's not like they're really looking for justice. No, or trying they don't to, care about the yeah, boy they locked really, up or the yeah. parent that... Zero. You gave them power when you did that. Now all parents are going to be afraid and they're going to punish their kids in the wrong way because they don't want to go to jail now. And the kids are going to be asking, them, did your parents buy you a gun today? <laughs> the schools. Y'all better wake up. <laughs> really, this is, these people are serious. Sean, what did you say to it? I forgot what you said. Um, I, I said I agreed with Joel. You know, maybe that. Um, um, you know, they sh they shouldn't have been charged with that. You know, I think they were charged with manslaughter. Wow. So <sighs> to charge them with what their son did is wrong. But to charge them with like you know being an accomplice to, to they murder, were not an accomplice. Um, they weren't you know. there when you did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, get, they, they drove him to school and they, hang, they hung outside so he can do, come and run in the car and take off. I'm uh, telling you, I'll do what you <laughs> want, but this is another grave mistake. We are responsible for our life, no one else. But go ahead. I was going to change the subject. Oh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I can? Yeah. All right, nice. Um, I went to a museum, museum yesterday and... Um, looked at some art. It was pretty cool. I hadn't done that in a while. And um, I was having a conversation with the person I, I went with. And we were talking about how, you know, m modern art versus like traditional art, like yeah. traditional art being like beautiful portraits and c cathedrals and, and stuff that has meaning. And then modern art where you just put like, you know, a piece of wood on the wall and <laughs> call it call it art. Yeah. It had both of those types of things there. And um, it was just interesting. I don't really have anything to say about it, but it was interesting to have that conversation about like, does does art does does art is art objective? You know, is there any objective meaning, or is it just all subjective and relative? And like, oh, you know, I like this and you like that, and it's all meaningless and nothing matters anyway. Yeah, you know? what a mess, huh? Yeah. And then there are people with a lot of money they go to the art show and they're looking at the wall. Yeah. 
Come here, honey. Yeah, they love talking about it, too. <laughs> honey, what, what do you think about that piece over there, honey? Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just lovely. Yeah, I think that's really nice. And then they're like, come over here, Justin, and tell me what you think. And they're like, what do you think about that beautiful piece right there? I'm like, what? Where? <laughs> that's junk. That's not even art. That's graffiti. And they use all these big words to show right. how, like, what they understand about it. And it's all ego. Y'all better wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Y'all don't see what's happening. You can never agree with the world. When you agree with the world, you agree with the devil. Really, you can't agree with the world. You can be in it, but not of it. You cannot agree with the world.